crowd here. Uh, pray for my, my parents as well. They're, they're out of town. Uh, they're doing some traveling, so um, they'll be back before Sunday. But um, I appreciate Sister Daphne for, for leading our praise and worship. So let's give her a hand tonight. As I said before, we're extremely blessed with, with talent, but most importantly, anointing in this church, anointing talent. So um, and, uh, that's, uh, that's an extreme blessing. So, all right. If you got your word with you, take your, your Bible with you tonight, I'll be coming from Matthew chapter 8. Um, this is something we, we kind of touched on recently. And uh, I just wanted to expound on it tonight. It's just been heavy on my heart. God's been just working on, on me with some stuff. And so, you know, I, I begin to think, you know, well, if he's working on me with some stuff, you know, maybe maybe some other people need to hear it. Um, and so I just want to hopefully encourage us tonight. Um, I hope that you leave this place strengthened and empowered. To, to go out and face whatever the world wants to bring at you, okay? Because I want you to know that there's nothing out there that can come against you that can overtake you. Because we serve a God that's greater than anything that can come against you. So, and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight. So, Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to be uh, starting on verse 23, reading down through verse 27. And uh, if it's on the screen or you got it in your word, say amen. 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 All right, let's get into it. It says... Now when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him, and suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Now, tonight I think that, that we can all admit that, that either we're, we're in a storm right now, or that we've been in a storm before. How many would would, would say that that's correct, that you've been through storms before. And, you know, every storm can be a little different. Not every storm is going to be the same. Some storms that just pop up out of nowhere, right? Some storms, you can walk outside and like a physical storm, you can see it for miles away and you can see it make its way on in, can't you, Brother Michael? And, and you can start to prepare for it. I know that, that one of the things that that I, that I always think about is, you know, down in like Florida, um, that, you know, when, when they know that a storm is coming up, you know, like a, a hurricane or a tropical storm, um, you've either got people doing, you know, one of three things. They're either getting out of there, they're boarding their house up and getting prepared for the storm so they can take it, and then you got some people that do nothing. And that's it's really sad because me and one of my buddies that is from Florida, he's been down there in that area before. He said that it's sad that there's there's literally people down there that that are so stubborn that, that they'll just stay right where they're at and they won't make any preparations. You know, they'll just hang out and they'll lose everything, but and sometimes even their lives, and they don't understand that if they would have just made preparations. Or if they would have gotten out of there and, and listened to the warnings, then they would have been saved. It would have saved them their life, a lot of heartache. But if you know that a storm is coming, why not prepare yourself for it? And God wants us to be prepared for anything that comes our way. Now, the one thing that we got to understand is that serving God doesn't exempt us from storms. Amen. It's not going to exempt you from any kind of storm. Um, we, we talked about it before, but you know, when you go to school or when you went to school, we had tests, right? right. And, and just because we went to school didn't mean we were exempt mm -hmm. from any tests, right? We still had to take the tests. 
I wish it worked out like that because I had pretty decent attendance. I might have not had to take so many tests back in the day. But because tests can be scary, right? Especially when when you begin to think about, you know, when you get into like high school and college and things like that, where you know you don't have a whole lot of busy work. You just got like maybe five tests and that makes up your whole grade, you know, for the semester or something like that. Those tests, they, they mean and they, they weigh so much on your success and, and that can be stressful, right? It can be very stressful. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how to deal with that kind of stress. They don't know how to deal with the, the pressure that that test is, is going to bring. So I want you to know that there's going to be tests, there's going to be trials, there's going to be storms, but we've got to understand that we've got a God on the back end that he's got everything in control. And if we will rely on him, if we'll allow him to get us ready for whatever test or storm comes our way, then we will be prepared. You can get down about it. You know, it, it's, it's going to happen. You'll get down because you're going through something. Sometimes you'll feel beat down or, or run down or just wore out. Sometimes you'll uh, ask the, the question that so many of, of us like to ask. And I said us. Notice I said us. I didn't say y'all. I say us. When you're going through something and you ask God why. Why? Why me? Why now? Why this? Why that? And... It's not our it's not our job to know the why. It's our job to know the who. And the who is who can bring us through any storm that we come against. John 16 and 33, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. See, we've got to understand that there are so many things that, that we put our, our faith and our hope in and, and we seem to rely on them to have some kind of sense of peace when God is the only hope that we truly have because nothing else can save us. Nothing else can save us like Jesus can. Nobody else had the power to get on that cross and die for every single one of us. He could have been just a, an ordinary man from the midst. He could have been just somebody that said, hey, I'll go up there. I'll do it. But he didn't have the power of God. See, we've said it before, but Jesus was all God, and he was all man. He was the only one that had the ability to go up on that cross and die for each and every single one of us so we could have peace. So we can have hope. So we can have the possibility of having eternity with him in heaven. So we didn't have to be shackled by sin. We don't have to worry about all that. Sister Daphne, you were talking about your friend that's that's down there in rehab battling. I, I, I believe with everything in me that, that she can receive deliverance. And she doesn't have to go through 12 steps. She just that's has it. to go to the right person. And that's Jesus. That's it. That's all it is. When you take whatever you're going through and you put your life and you put the circumstance, you put the trial back into God's hands, back into the hands of the person who has all the power, then he can take it and he can begin to, to move in it. All right? He can begin to move. Because, see, storms... Natural storms, they, they do move, right? They don't just stay in the same place all the time. No, they move. They move away. Just like we have season, seasons that come and go. And in Georgia, all y'all know, we can experience all four in one week. That's it. And I think that's where we're headed. Um, we, we've had freezing. You know, we've had, you know, some weather that felt like springtime and by the end of the week I, I hear we're heading into summertime and if you know it's just crazy and we wonder we wonder why everybody's sick and stuff like that that's why between that and the pollen i mean there 
There's so much stuff going around. But seasons come and seasons go. Well, when we've got a season that we know is coming up, we prepare for that season, right? How many of y'all put your, your winter clothes away? Or do you just leave them out all the time? Anybody put their winter clothes away? People do that? In the back of the closet. In the back of the closet. But they're still, they're not right there in your drawers that you use all the time, right? That's because we know that we're not going to need them. Once you get to a certain point where the season is truly there, you're not going to need them anymore. You're not going to need these, these big old coats and you know, these, these you know, heavy jeans and long sleeve shirts and all that stuff and hoodies. You won't need all that. So what you do is you make room for the things that you do need during that season. <clears throat> the problem is, is spiritually, we're going through one season after the next, and we're coming up on another season, but we're not preparing ourselves for that season, and we're hanging on to stuff that had to do with last season. And all it's going to do is weigh you down. That's all it's going to do. We've got to leave yesterday and leave the past in the past, right? Easier said than done, correct? It's a whole lot easier said than done. But you know what? If you'll leave, leave what happened 10 years ago, or five years ago, or maybe even a month ago, if you'll leave that in the past and focus on moving forward, then you know what? You don't have anything to worry about. You don't have anything to worry about. Now, it is important that we remember that God brought us through that season. You don't have to focus on the season, but you can focus on the solution for the season. What brought you through? I don't know about y'all, but I've gone through different circumstances and, and different things in my life to where I started praying that, that you know, God would, you know, come and, you know, he would just, you know, take it and make a difference and, you know, just end it and be done with and and I wanted it done right then, right? Uh huh. Right, because you know we live in this this fast food society where you know we just want to pull up, you know, and get our stuff and go home, right? We want want it right now. But it doesn't work like that because God's not on our time; we're on God's time, and His time is a lot different than ours. Mm -hmm. And God truly knows what's best for us. What we've got to be able to do is we've got to be able to trust God. We've got to be able to trust his timing, to trust his plan, to trust his, his will and his way. It's hard to do sometimes when we don't know the end game. But there's been so many times where I, I prayed that prayer that I just told you about that not wanting God to deliver me from something or, or bring me through something. And then I prayed about it. It didn't happen right then. But then a month down the road, it just hit my it hit me in my in my mind that I was through. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize it. God had brought me out. And I didn't even realize it, Brother Mitch. It's because sometimes we we get so, so zoned out with our life that, that we don't even realize what he's brought us through sometimes. Sometimes we don't understand what he's keeping us from. You know, I, I'm, I'm a, a big believer that, that everything works together for a reason. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this or not before, but there's been times I, I told y'all, one of one of my, I guess my faults is that I do get a little impatient sometimes, and maybe not in all situations, but for some reason, when I'm behind the wheel of a car, I am extremely impatient, and I don't have a lot of, you know, I'm like, you know, hey, we, we need to go. You know, we're out here driving. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the bypass, and the speed limit's 65, and you're running, you know, 58, we gotta go. Because I'm normally running 10 miles, 10 to 15 miles per hour over the speed limit, anyways. Smiling, you didn't hear that. <laughs> he knows. 
But when I'm out there, it's not a race. But I just, I like to go, you know. I don't, I don't like to be just out there. There's been plenty of times to where I've been going down one of these little country roads or something like that, gotten stuck behind somebody, couldn't pass them, cars are coming the other way, something like that. And, and I'm like, you know, this is ridiculous, you know. People just out here like they ain't got nowhere to go. They ain't got nowhere to be. And, and it makes me late. Well, then I'll get further down the road, and a wreck has just happened. Mm -hmm. And I begin to think, you know what? If I would have been moving at the pace that I wanted to move, maybe I would have been right there in the middle of it. Maybe I'd have been right there, you know, maybe I'd have been the first one in the accident. We never know what God is using to try and slow us down sometimes to keep us from trouble, to keep us from a, a bigger accident because we think that's a trial right there. You know, being stuck behind the person that doesn't want to move or, you know, or feeling like you're, you know, stuck in, in a rut or something like that spiritually or, you know, and you don't understand why, but God maybe is, is telling us, hey, just take a second, take a minute. I don't want you moving too fast right now because if you do, you're in up in trouble. Sometimes he just asks for us to, to be still and trust him, to have some faith. Jesus, he was sleeping on the boat. He was sleeping good. And, and they woke him up because they were afraid, right? How many of y'all have, have been in the middle of the night and something been going on and, and all you need, need, knew to do was just pray? And you had to go wake God up. God, hey, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, but I need you right now. I need you right now. I want you to know God will be there for you. He'll be there for you. He woke up. But notice when he... I find it funny, y'all know I love movies, right? I find it funny that uh, in, in Forrest Gump, that Jenny told Forrest, she said, if you get in any kind of trouble, just run. Just run. And that's what this dude did, right? They started bombing people over in Vietnam, and that dude took off. Because Let's be real. If they're dropping bombs, part of the fight is getting out of there. Because you got to stay alive, too. But this guy, he ran, he was so fast, he ran past everybody. And then he got to a point where he looked around and he was by himself. Now, he could have said, you know what, I'm going to stay right here because I made it, right? He didn't do that. He had people that were in the woods that didn't make it out there, that were dependent on him to go back into those woods and help pull him out. 
And that's what he did. He went and he started getting somebody one at a time. One at a time. Bring them back one at a time. Not everybody made it. Not everybody came out, out of there, you know, with a great story. You know, there were people that lost arms, lost legs. Poor Lieutenant Dan. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Dan was upset about it. Eventually, later on in the movie, he, he thanked Forrest for, for going in there and, and, and saving his life. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of bitterness. A lot of bitterness that, that people are dealing with. That's true. But you know what? They're still, whether they know it or not, they're looking for somebody that will fight for them. And that will go out wherever they're at, even if it's in the middle of their battle, Brother Mitch, and that will pull them out. That will pull them out. Earlier we spoke about, you know, some of our upcoming events and, and reaching out to people. You know, somebody out there is struggling. Somebody out there is, is, is in maybe the greatest storm they've ever faced in their life. And they're looking for somebody that will come to them and say, hey, I'm here with you. Looking for somebody that will take them by the hand and say, hey, can I pray with you? Hey, you want to come to church on Sunday? We're, we're having a worship service. I think it, you, know, you really enjoy it. The saddest thing that I ever hear is when I, I I've invited people to church that have said this before, and I, I'm sure you've heard it before too, but somebody says, I would come, but I've just got a lot going on right now. That breaks my heart because this is exactly where they need to be. I don't know if they understand that or not. If you've got a lot going on, I know the person who can take a lot of that off of them. And he's right here. He's right here. This is exactly where they need to be. So we need to not only fight our own battles, but we need to understand that we need to be there to help somebody else in their fight, in their storm. You don't have to... So many people, you know, they, they view, you know, you know, crying or, you know, shouting or something like that, you know, or, or letting stuff out, they, they view that as weakness. But it's not weakness. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. Because when you bottle stuff up inside, it's just going to build up to the point where it'll drive you crazy. It'll cause you unrest. I don't know about y'all, but I like to sleep. I don't sleep a lot. Like I told y'all before, I get five hours of sleep at night, and I'm good. I, I can go. If I get too much sleep, it's not good. I wake up, wake up groggy. I can't stand it. But when I sleep, I want to sleep good, right? But there's been plenty of times that I've gone to bed and all I've done was toss and turn. And not because I couldn't get comfortable physically, but there was something going on in my mind. Mm -hmm. There was something racing in my brain. Maybe an issue that, that I was having, you know, at work, or you know, maybe a, a spiritual battle that I was fighting, you know, whatever, whatever it was, it caused me unrest. And then, next thing you know, if, if, if y'all's life is like mine, you'll finally go to sleep. And it'll seem like you're asleep for about five minutes and that alarm clock goes off. Uh -huh. And you wake up and you're like, oh, this is ridiculous. See, God wants to give you peace. He wants to give you rest. He wants to take your burdens from you. He wants to make everything easier. In Psalms 34, 17 through 19, notice there's a lot, a lot that's said about people that are righteous and people that pursue righteousness. But right here in my Bible, it says the righteous cry out. That lets me know that the righteous don't have it all figured out because they need help. And it's okay to be righteous and still need help. Just because you're righteous doesn't mean you don't need God anymore. I need him every single day. 
It says the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. You know what? You don't have to feel any less righteous or any less holy or any less like a child of God because you've got something going on or because you're struggling with something. You know what that makes you? Human. Mm -hmm. It makes you human. Here's what we don't want to happen. We don't, want, we don't want people to say, you know what? I'm just, I'm done fighting. I'm just going to give in to it. I'm going to give in to the storm. I'm just going to let the storm take me. We can't, we can't be afraid. Because a lot of times, that's what people that are afraid do. They give up, right? Because they're afraid of, of getting hurt. They're afraid of, you know, what they're going to have to go through. When God's got something so much greater on the other side. Because if you let the storm take you, then there's nothing else you can do. But if you'll fight and prepare yourself and let the storm pass, on the other side of that storm, there's sunshine, there's rainbows, there's better days. You know, it's important to remember that you can't have a rainbow without having a storm. Without having the rain. It's not possible. That's how they work. Psalms 56 and 3 simply says, Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Whenever I'm afraid. Now, we, we used to sing a song back in the day called He's an On Time God. We hadn't sang it in a long time. Maybe it's time to break it back out. But part of that song says, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus did in this boat. When he woke up, the first thing he did was address the people in the boat. See, what he had to do is he had to calm them down on the inside before he could speak to what was going on on the outside. He had to speak to them. And say, hey, you, why, why are you afraid? Why don't you have any faith? Don't you know I've got you right here? I'm right here with you. So don't be afraid. If you've got something going on, allow God to work on the inside. And then everything on the outside, it'll begin to take care of itself. See, First, sometimes, and most of the time, I would say, the first thing God has to do is he has to change us. And then he can change our circumstance. He has to change us and then our circumstance. And as a result of that, we grow in our faith. And we end up better equipped to be able to handle the next storm that, that blows into our life. See, Jesus could have got up from this boat and he could have just, he could have just told the storm, all right, stop. And that would be great, right? But notice he addressed a bigger problem, and that was the faith of the men in the boat. See, God wants you to have faith. He wants you to have trust. He wants you to have hope in him. And that's why it's so important that, that we get into the Word of God, that we have a prayer life. If you're going through something, fast. Mm -hmm. Fasting combined with prayer makes a difference. It sure does. I promise you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get into that Word of God, those scriptures are tough to read, aren't they, little bit? I told y'all before, sometimes you know, we read a scripture and it feels like somebody slapped you right in the face. Man, you know, I began to think about, you know, people that are that are heavy sleepers. You all ever know somebody that sleeps so heavy you kind of have to, you can say their name, you know, and they just won't do anything, and you have to come up and kind of pop them in the face a little bit, maybe pour some water on them or something like that. You get them up and get them going. If we feel
feel like we read a scripture and we feel like it's a smack in the face, maybe God's trying to wake you up. Maybe God's trying to get your attention so you don't miss it. 2 Timothy 3, 16-17 says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. See, he wants to equip you. I want you to think about something tonight. That there's an enemy out there that the enemy, as it says in John, only comes to steal, kill, kill and, destroy. and destroy, right? Yep. All he does is he wants to take from you. Yep. He wants to steal from you. Mm -hmm. He wants to destroy you. But you've got a God on the other side that is wanting to, to give you power. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to equip you for anything that can come against you. But so many times we fall into the enemy's trap, right? Because the devil will put something out there that, that seems desirable, but all it does is lead to destruction. It seems harmless, but it's going to hurt us in the end. It seems like a lot of fun, and it may be fun right there in the moment, but what we don't even know is it's killing us inside. Like a disease. It's killing us. See, God, God's like a good parent. How many of y'all got disciplined growing up? <laughs> I told somebody before, I said, you know, I can I can stand up here and I can truthfully say that, that I was not with as a child. And I wasn't. I was beat. <laughs> yes. And I deserved every single one of them. Let's be real. I deserved every single one of them. In the moment, in the moment it, it upset me and I was hurt and I was like, why would my daddy, who loves me so much, whip me and, and, and hurt me and make, make my back in where I can't even hardly sit down? He had this belt that had woven leather in it. And you could see bruises, like woven bruises in my butt. And back then, I didn't have as much padding. <laughs> and, and I struggled with that for a while. But now, looking back on it, thank God that I had a daddy and a mama that cared enough about me to, to discipline me and raise me up the way that I was supposed to be raised. And prepare me for what was to come. Because I go ahead and tell you, there's a lot of kids that are running around nowadays that they ain't ready. They're not ready for what the real world is going to hold. You can go and you can try to do whatever you want to at work or talk to your boss however you want to talk to them. Because you don't know anything about discipline, but you'll end up with a pink slip real quick. I'm glad that we've served a heavenly father that cares enough about us to correct us and rebuke us. When we get in our own way, right? Am I the only one that gets in my own way? I do it. I'll get my own stubborn, brother Mike. I'm hard headed. I'll get my own way sometimes. And God will have to come knock me on the head and say, hey, go out of the way, brother. You know what I mean? It happens. But he's equipping me to be somebody better. To be somebody stronger. The last verse I want to read here, and I hope this encourages you tonight, is Lamentations 3, 21 through 24. Now, a little while ago I told us that we needed to leave our past in the past, right? Mm -hmm. And I told you that we do need to remember what God brought us from, but we don't need to be stuck there, Right? This verse right here, it says, Yet this I call to mind, which means, Yet this I remember, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. 
Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. I know you might feel like you're in a struggle right now. But if you'll give it to God, and if you'll wait on him, I promise you he'll show up at just the right moment. At just the right moment. But we've got to have faith. We've got to understand that he's our hope. We've got to understand that, that he's not looking to consume us like the devil is. He's not looking to leave us just lying in a ditch hurting. But he wants to pick us up. And he wants to put us back where we belong.